Hi. In the previous video, we covered quadratic function. Quadratic function and linear function that we covered before are special cases of polynomial functions. Polynomial functions have general formulations like a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3 x to the power of 3 plus until a n to the power x n. Now, as you see, a0 is a constant, a1, a2, a3 until a n are coefficients, and polynomial functions are having uh, natural numbers or even whole numbers if we would Notice that this is simply a0, x0, which is 1, uh, in their powers, and the degree of the polynomial uh, is given by the highest power. So if our polynomial would be uh, 3 plus x squared plus x to the power of 7, we would call this a polynomial function of degree 7. Okay, so now, how do we draw these type of functions? Well, this is a little bit problematic. We actually are going to learn some tools to draw uh, functions like that, uh, but to this end, we need to start calculus. But, at this moment, we can actually notice that functions that we talk about look more or less like this. Depending on the degree of the polynomial uh, and the um, configuration of all the coefficients, uh, those functions look something like this. So they have these uh, uh, these hills and valleys, hills and valleys, and of course at the end they're usually well, on one hand we're going to infinity, on the other to negative infinity. Now, uh, those will be very important to us because as we will learn in the future, we will call point like this local maximum, like this local min. But for now, all I want you to know is that those are the shapes that we are expecting to happen anytime when we talk about polynomials of some higher degrees. But for, for now, I just want you to remember some basics about it. And uh, let me uh, demonstrate this using, again, a very simple example of function y equals x to the power of 3. In the previous video, we saw how x to the power of 2 works. Now, let's check this one. Also, let's start with the table. So, we've got negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, 0 to the power of 3, 0 to the, uh, 1 to the power of 3, 1. 2 to the power of 3 is 8 and 3 to the power of 3 is 27. Now, more interesting things are happening over here. Look, here, everything that is happening here looks more or less like a quadratic function. It's just growing a little bit faster, right? But what is happening over here? Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. But if I multiply it by negative 1 again, I'm getting negative 1. So here I will have negative 8 and negative 27. So how should I draw this function? Y, X, and look, this function. actually looks like this. Look, over here we would have negative
negative 1, negative 1. Of course, those should be symmetrical, but again, I'm not a robot. Okay, so here we have 1, negative 1, for negative 2 we will have negative 8, and for For uh, 2, we will have A. So as you see, this function is always growing, but look, here actually the function is growing slower and slower and slower and slower, while on this side it's growing faster and faster and faster. Okay, now let's again do some simple transformations on this function. And let's just say we're going to start with y equals to negative x cubed. So, what we're going to get here, again, we can use, we can use uh, those values. Because we remember, if I'm going to put minus in front of the entire function, what should happen? Everything that used to be positive becomes negative, right? Zero stays, zero, so negative one negative 8, negative 27. Here, this will be 1, 8, 27. So, how should I draw it? Look, again, we will just have mirror reflection with respect to x-axis. So, this function will look like that. And look, this except for these humps, or hills, and valleys gives us the entire notion what will be happening with polynomial function. If I would have here now function y equals x to the power of 4 what would we have? Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0 one, two, three. Now, zero to the power of, uh, of okay. you know what, let's, let's do it with a color. Uh, just a little bit of blue and yellow. So, now, y, if x is zero, zero. One, one. Two to the power of four is 16. And three to the power of four is a1. Over here we will have 1, 16, a1. Right? So look, what will happen to this function over here? Now, two things are going to happen. First, in this part, the function is getting steeper. Look, it grows even faster than this one. And also, because we are raising to the power of 4, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, times negative 1 is negative 1, times negative 1 is again 1. We will have a function like this. What if I would put minus over here? Again, those would become negative. And I would take the blue function, draw a mirror reflection over here. And look, so what is happening when we have single components, so uh, uh, mononomial, one mononomial, and we are raising power, if the power would be 5, we would have even a steeper function here, and it would have negative values over here. Then to the power of 6, we would get even steeper function with both hands up. Okay, and basically, at this moment, this is all I want you to know about these polynomial functions. Uh, without proper tools that we're going to introduce during calculus, there is no way for us to draw them properly. But let's just say uh, that we want to complicate our life even more. Now, the next function that usually comes after polynomial function 
is called rational function. Now, rational function is a ratio of two polynomials. So in this case, we would have y equals, and we have a fractional bar, and at the, in the numerator, we have a0 plus a1x plus a2 x squared plus until a n x n. Now, what will we have in the bottom? Well, in the bottom, we will have another polynomial. b0 plus b1 x plus a2 x, oh, I'm sorry, b2 x squared plus so b m x m. They do not need to be of the same order. Here we can have two different polynomials. Now, how do we draw this function? Well, this one will definitely not going to do uh, without uh, without calculus. But we're going to do some special simple cases of rational functions known as reciprocal function in the next video. What I want you to remember is that using the tools of calculus we will be able to draw a function with any complications. But what we need to make sure before we actually start with this function? Well, the important thing is that this expression on the bottom can never be equal to zero. So what we need to do first in a case like this is to make sure that whatever is in the denominator will be different than zero. But about this a little bit later, in the next video we're gonna see a reciprocal function.